Welcome to The Game Loop, your weekly dose of gaming news, insights, and hot takes. So sit back, relax, and jump into the loop. Game Loop, your weekly destination for all things gaming. I'm your host, It's Just Joe, and today we'll be diving into some gaming news, talking about the games we've been playing recently and the upcoming titles we're looking forward to. This week, I'm joined by N7, my wonderful guest, who I'm actually super inspired by as a creator. So N7 is super consistent, or seems to be super consistent with his content, and uh, that's something that I strive to do as well. So uh, N7, how are we doing? Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, It's When you messaged me, I was like, yes, I'll be totally down to, it's been a while since we've actually collabed and been on this, across the mic from each other. So it's been really looking forward to this excellent excellent so uh yeah we'll uh, we'll jump right into kind of some of the the weekly news topics and the first one i really wanted to dive into was uh netflix shut down their triple uh, a studio team blue uh you know and surface level at first i, I wasn't really uh shocked by this it's kind of a trend in triple a gaming right now people getting laid off things shutting down i've never been a real connoisseur of you know playing games via netflix you know like trying to (laughs) do something on the mobile app and i get all these ads for games Mm -hmm. um but what struck me about this was some of the names that were associated with uh with this studio so they had like the former like uh overwatch executive producer uh you know that they brought over from uh, Blizzard. They had, uh, let's see, Joseph Staten, who was a creative lead uh, over on Halo with Bungie, you know, and then they had um, another uh, art director from Sony, whose like most recent experience was God of War, you know, so a lot of heavy hitters. And then here in October, they just shuttered the doors and, and all three of those hires are no longer with the, the organization. Uh, so I did find that kind of interesting. Uh, be interested to kind of hear your take and what your thoughts are. Well, for one, I'm very surprised that Netflix gaming is still a thing. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, I remember us from Stadia, like once Stadia shut down, a little shout out to that. We were um, People were talking about, oh, Netflix is coming out with a cloud service. And uh, a lot of us were going, yeah, I don't think that's going to last long. But here we are is still kicking so that's impressive <laughs> for so i'm more shocked of anything but yeah i did not know about this so this is first time hearing about it and um just reading the your notes that's like some crazy names as you mentioned it's but at the same time it's like uh it's sort of a trend that's happening right now unfortunately there's a lot of layoffs and all that which is unfortunate yeah for sure for sure I, i've definitely seen a lot of people out there whether it's on like social networks talking about how, you know, an entire creative team for, you mm-hmm. know, I know a bunch of folks that specifically worked on like Overwatch and a bunch of skins and stuff for Overwatch, like recently got let go, you know, and they're all looking for um, new positions and stuff. And it was, it was interesting to see clearly players comments that were very excited about like, oh, you made the skin for character X, you know, and players were super hyped about it. Um you know, but just the trend of the industry right now, they seem to be kind of slimming down to kind of save on funds and, and save some money, which actually is a great segue to topic number two. Uh, so this is a mm-hmm. game that I played. It's a uh, Prince of Persia, the Lost Crown. So supposedly mm-hmm. their whole team has been disbanded. Uh, mm-hmm. And the reasoning behind this is, um, you know, supposedly by all accounts, the developers loved working on the game. They really enjoyed it. You know, they wanted to uh, they wanted to do a sequel or at least more expansions beyond uh, the Mask of Darkness, which is uh, the most recent expansion that came out. But Ubisoft allegedly shelled them out to other projects and disbanded the team uh, because it wasn't making enough money. And they mm-hmm. had concerns that, a, a you know, a sequel would cannibalize the long term sales effects of the of the first game. Um and once again, unfortunately, I think this is a trend we're more commonly seeing in AAA gaming that a lot of it at the end of the day is about the profit margin. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I don't know if that will change. Um, I do think there is some interesting uh, side effects, which I'd love to dive into because of this. Um, but love to get your thoughts on what you think about, you know, large gaming teams disbanding and, and moving on to other projects, you know, for pure profit. Right. Um, well, I can't say for pure profit, um, so say, but like um, one that we're going to cover a little bit later is um, Bungie and Destiny. But uh, 
they did uh, large layoffs. Um, I think it was two sets mm -hmm. of layoffs mm -hmm. and all that. So I've just been hearing about that in the Destiny community. So yes, yeah, it's, it's like sadly a trend, but um, it's interesting that the, the Lost Crown got disbanded because uh, I only played like maybe a down or half of it, but I was not too big into side scroller platforms, but I did enjoy it. So I'm sad that uh, it got disbanded because I'm pretty sure there were plenty of people in um, who were 100% um, behind the game and wanted it to expand. So right. always and, sad to have those people. Yep. And, and I, th I think uh, a classic example, like Salt in the Wound, would be mm -hmm. um, you know the the Unity game engine, which a lot of like indie developers, yeah. even large AAA companies utilize. Um, they do like awards every year, and mm. the game that won best 3D art for their awards, which was announced today on uh, October 23rd, was Prince of Persia. Oh, no. Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> you know, That's horrible. Best 3D art for the 16th Annual Unity Awards. Uh, oh, you know, no. Voted on by, you know, uh, folks that use Unity and in the public. You know, it's not like a company-driven mm. thing. It's actual users that, that vote on, on that type of stuff. So that's kind of a... a salt in the wound uh but i will say with all your AAA layoffs and like a bunch of these teams being disbanded uh i feel like we're seeing more and more people kind of break off from AAA and start their own thing so they can oh, work yeah. on you know projects they're passionate about or, or smaller projects mm -hmm. with a you know focused team real small teams you know real agile teams so i think the future for what some of those smaller teams that have kind of come from the AAA industry uh, could produce could uh, could be super interesting, but I guess that's a, a time will tell uh, situation. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of um, successful indie developers or um, game developing teams that have not been heard about mm -hmm. taking a lot of the limelight mm -hmm. lately, which is pretty cool. I right. like this little shift that's going. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I think it brings a lot of interesting uh, games to the table, you know, mm -hmm. um, much like the next one we're going to talk about here. So this game's called Liar's Bar. Uh, so this game kind of sh rocket shipped out of nowhere to popularity with like streamers and YouTube and this and that. Um, and basically uh, it's like characters from kind of like they look like characters from Zootopia, you know, think like dogs playing poker mixed with Russian roulette. That's the the essential concept. You know, you can be a, a pig or a, or a Doverman pincher or a rabbit. Uh, you know that type of thing. And it where it is really cool to watch and, and great content if you have kind of like a core friend group to play. Uh, you know, I I believe their popularity is going to be short lived, or it seems like it's going to be short lived because like the in entertainment value, like as a player quickly dwindles you know their yeah mm -hmm. their characters have when you're playing a character in the game it's like the same dialogue loop like they say the mm -hmm. same quips and things over and over so if you're playing like a i don't know the game could go on for let's say 20 minutes you're playing a 20 minute game and you hear the same line from your character eight to 12 times it it kind of wears off after like mm -hmm. the first time you laugh you know uh you know but come the 10th time you, you've kind of had enough uh, so I don't know from a, unless they make a ton of updates to the game to really gear mm -hmm. it towards like the streaming community where there's like chat integration and like other things where you could pick up on right. characters kind of tells, cause all it is is like subtle head nods and things like that. Um, it's, it's, it's not like an among us where, you know, there's like pure, like interaction and you can follow people and you kind of see what's going on. You know, it, it's very subtle gestures. So it's kind of hard to pick up on a lot of the tells. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see if this lives on or, or is just kind of a flash in the pan for kind of streamers, content creators, because uh, yeah. I don't know what their player base is, is going to look like. Uh, have you checked out this game? Have you heard about it, seen it? No, this is the first time hearing about it. Okay. All right. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Fair enough. I feel that's sort of like um, you've heard the game chained together, right? Yeah, it's very... Mm -hmm kind of you know rage baby you know yeah set up your buddy <laughs> type situation mm -hmm. it's kind of in the similar vein for sure where you know it's gonna you know it's gonna have its limelight with the streamers but i feel like it's sort of dwindling now because i'm not mm -hmm. seeing that in my um, feeds as much so mm -hmm. i would agree that this will like a little little blip on the radar it's like okay that's a cool game and then we'll probably move on to something sure. else <laughs> i will talk yeah. about it more when we get to the games we've been playing but a game that mm -hmm. is directly influenced by chain together that i've been checking out lately um which is great for streaming 
but also somewhat rage inducing, like as a player, <laughs> but, but enjoyable at the same time. It's called unicycle pizza time. And you're, yeah, you're a delivery dude on a unicycle and it's like a platformer on a unicycle. And if you fall, you die. And it's, oh, man. it's great. It is. It's on team. Uh, I'll hold off as we get into that when we talk about what we've been playing, but I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing this. <laughs> I've enjoyed it immensely. I've enjoyed it. Immensely. Um, so yeah, now let's move on to the one you kind of alluded to uh, earlier on. We're going to dive into the Destiny 2 mobile game, uh, mm-hmm. you know. And really, supposedly, if, if a mobile co-op shooter is your thing, this is going to be your, your bread and butter. Um, this one really caught me by surprise. So it, it's being mm-hmm. a game made by NetEase. You know, they're a, a mobile, you know, make plenty of mobile games. Mm-hmm. People weren't happy with Bungie. Like, they were, people were really upset that, like, oh, this is going to take Bungie away from, like, actual Destiny 2 stuff. Uh, but however, it, it would seem that Bungie is only like licensing the IP that really they don't have a lot of involvement. It's in like an alternate parallel Destiny timeline thing, mm-hmm. which I, I don't know how to really wrap my head around that, but that's how they, <laughs> they state it. Um, yeah. You know, and the really thing that struck me was like, is this going to be the new norm? Are we going to see PC and console games that get some like janky kind of sort of mobile port? You know, like we saw it. What was yeah. um, it wasn't League. Was it League of Legends? Did League of Legends do a mobile app? Mm, but I, I know, I know what you're trying to get at is where there have been a few games that were on consoles and PCs, and then they got a like a part two, but it went to mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like a dumb. I, like I a do understand down. what you're getting at. But I just can't tell you what games those yeah, were. Yeah, I cannot remember the life. Head. But it was a watered yeah, down version of that. the original yeah. game. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, 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 Division. Division. That was one of that was one of them. Yeah, sure, yeah. Of Division yeah. was one. I remember I tried mm-hmm. it for all of like I think it was ten minutes, and I was like, no, nope, <laughs> not enough. Not, not for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I I love uh, being someone who is a, a fairly avid Destiny player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd love to hear kind of your feedback and and what you think. Oh yeah, of uh, believe it or not, uh, back three months ago in July, I actually stated to my community i'm actually going to hang up my cape and no longer be a destiny content creator and i'm going to stop playing destiny because the new uh, the latest dlc which is final shape was the end of the saga for the destiny um story and i was like i'm pretty satisfied i feel like it uh, they wrapped up everything they needed to and so right now destiny is still going with seasons and all that but i just don't feel um pulled back but after watching the trailer for a mobile game i posted in my community i was like you know guys i haven't been here for a while but a little bit weird i think i might try this mobile game out just to try it out so it has piqued my interest and because it's a it's a new venue like um something different because right now it feels destiny is sort of in a like a rut that's hard to get out of Right. And that's why it's not a live really service. Yeah. It's, it's season 27. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The same thing, you know, sure, a little bit new skin on it, but it's the same basic thing that you have to do, rinse and repeat. So I feel like, yes, mobile, like a lot of the fan base are just like, where is this coming from? I hate this, but there's something different. And I'm willing to jump into the Destiny world again because it's something different and it's right. something new for me. So for sure. I'm. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, is my expectations high? No, it's probably mid to low because it's a mobile game because uh, it's and it's by NetEase, which is known for its mobile games and it has had a lot of years. But at the same time, it's a mobile game. There's not really there's a limit to how much you can put into a phone <laughs> processing. Right, you know? For sure, for sure. So. Yeah, yeah, no, without a doubt. And I think. Um my assumption and pure guess on my part would be that this probably plays into the first two topics we talked about, you know, triple a studios getting smaller teams being cut down that type of thing, because from a, a world population standpoint, there's parts of the world where they just don't have access to like the appropriate internet speeds Mm -hmm. to play a lot of live service games, but they've got 5g and they've got, Mm -hmm. you know, good Wi-Fi infrastructure. So this open or a good um, phone in- infrastructure rather. Uh, so this opens up some opportunities there, potentially for in other parts of the world where, you know, they don't have great internet or great uh, networking connectivity, but they have good cell service. 
Yeah. You know, maybe. that's a good point. You yeah, know. that's a good point. Yeah. And and you never know. Like I played um what did I play on mobile that was actually like super fun and enjoyable. I didn't stick with it cuz I just wasn't wasn't uh didn't have the time to kind of sit down and just be on my phone for a, a large amount of time. Mm-hmm. But I tried like uh, Star Wars Hunters, which was like okay. a pretty fun mobile game. Like, you know, it's like a run and gun shoot 'em up, you know, but with Star Wars characters and you got lightsabers and all this other stuff and it was fun. Mm-hmm. And you know, same thing, you get skins and you can make your stormtrooper look different, that type of thing. Um, and I enjoyed it. And, and and for a mobile game, the execution was was good. Now, if they took that same game and did like the reverse and tried to port it to PC without any like upgrades <laughs> and fidelity and things like that, yeah, it probably wouldn't do great. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're the only at least the only one I can think of off the top of my head for a mobile game that they've ported to PC shortly after it came out on mobile that has done well or seems to do well is something like Marvel Snap. Oh, yeah. You know, because uh-huh. you can play it on Steam and it, you know, mm-hmm. it came out first on mobile. You know, that that kind of mechanic and that game lends itself to, you know, it's a combat card game. So there's not like mm-hmm. a, there is some nice fidelity and nice graphics to it. But, you know, you're not having to worry about like running at 120 FPS because it's a, you know, a, mo- a movement shooter or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. So. And fun fact about Snap, for those who have Discord, um, the Discord didn't you know, introduce like quests or things that if you either stream or play on the um, Discord detects that you're playing an X game, if it's within the um, bounty or quest, you'll get rewards. And right now, apparently, I have I can see it right here on my Discord is that um, Marvel Snap is doing a rewards segment. So for if you're listening to this later and check your Discord, and if you play Snap, you might get some reward from that. So. Very, I did there. not even know that. Very cool. You learn something <laughs> new every day. Yeah. Uh, something else that I learned new today was that uh, we've got more patent infringement claims happening. So for, it's oh, uh, like Nintendo and Power World. Uh, oh, now we get, boy. Now we got Sega jumping into the fight. So Sega uh, has reportedly filed a patent against um, Bank of Innovation. They're the developer of the idle RPG Memento Mori. Uh, they're seeking a billion yen in damages. So it's like mm. over six million dollars U.S. Uh, in an in injunction, you know, for patent infringement. Supposedly, like the two companies had been in some type of like negotiations or talks or whatever, and that didn't go great. And they're alleging that uh, Bank of Innovation has infringed upon five of their patents, all related to gameplay. Mm. Mm. So I don't know how I feel about these. I, I get yeah. it, but like, how does one? You know, I mean, it's code and and stuff like that that drives it, and they can patent mm-hmm. the mechanic. You know, I mean, so is someone going to patent like the FPS mechanic, <laughs> and then like we're just they're just going to have to yeah. like everyone's going to have to pay the piper to make an FPS game, uh, right? You know, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just crazy, and you know, a lot of these patents from what I've seen, and I am not a lawyer, I am not an expert, none of this is mm-hmm. legal advice. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of the patent stuff I've seen, it it comes out of. Uh, Japan, because apparently mm-hmm. in the U.S., for like a U.S. patent, it's hard for a lot of these organizations to actually get a U.S. patent for something like a game mechanic. Yes. So these are like other countries that, that some of this stuff is happening in. Um, mm-hmm. I just wonder if this is going to be the norm. Is this going to be another thing yeah. among studios closing down and teams disbanding where we got to worry about Big Brother coming after smaller organizations, companies, individuals, you know, as someone who's currently working on their own independent game it makes me terrified. Cause like, how mm. does one even, how do you even like quality control, quality check that? Like yeah. do any of my mechanic, you know, game mechanics infringe on anyone's patent. Like, yeah, I don't even know where yeah, well, it, it all that comes down to. Yeah. It all comes down to money, unfortunately, which is the big, the root cause of it is, um, you know, there, there's, it's, I can say it uh, in the gaming industry is pretty saturated right now. Mm. And some people can see it as a good thing. Some people say it's a bad thing, but you know, you have to get a leg up somehow. And so there's apparently the um, companies are finding a ways or loopholes around it, which is patent um, locking in. And so if you patent something, no one else, you won't have any contenders and you can get money from that. And so again, it's just money is, uh, pretty much a big point in here and it's it's really sad because as you said um for indie developers if you're creating a game that's patented you know you actually have to 
dish out the extra money if you want to use it, or you can't do it at all. So you have to think of something else. And so that limits your creativity. So it's just, it's not good. And a lot of, I've been you seeing a lot of videos as well. And next thing you know, yeah. you're getting a lawsuit in the mail, you know, that like mm -hmm. that's the type of stuff that keeps me up at night, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then a lot of, I've been seeing a lot of videos when they were talking about the Nintendo and Power World situation. They're like, this is not good for the gaming industry at all, because if they're successful, that means there are other companies that can follow suit and go, oh, they were successful. I can do it as well. And right. they the have a lot of money to be able to push it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's just not good for the gaming industry in for the sure. whole. So. For sure. Well, that's enough with the news topics and kind of the doldrums <laughs> of the gaming industry. I think that's a good <laughs> way to talk about this episode's sponsor. So we are sponsored. Quick out, quick shout out to our sponsor, Eclipse.gg. So if you don't use this tool, it is a great tool for content creators, streamers, that type of thing, to easily clip your gaming content. Uh, and if you want to try it out, you can use code It's Just Joe Ten to get ten percent off and support the podcast. So Eclipse.gg, ten percent off with It's Just Joe Ten. Check them out. So now we'll dive into what we've been playing this week. I kind of alluded to what I've been playing. Uh, so I'm actually going to let you go first, N7, before we talk about Unicycle, Pizza Time, and, and the other <laughs> chaos I've been getting. Yes, I am very much looking forward to hearing that little part of the <laughs> show. But um, as I mentioned earlier in the Destiny section, uh, I was a Destiny player uh, basically since Destiny 2 first released. But then this July of this 2024, um, I pretty much hung up my cape and then just said, I'm going to another game, which happens to be the first Descendant. And that was released back in July. And so I've not been playing any other, uh, I've like pretty much every day I've been playing that game nonstop. <laughs> and, um, but then I also, it's like, I've, uh, with my past experience with Destiny, where I just hard focused the game, I get burned out. And so the way to prevent burnout for me is on Mondays, I play Elden Ring, and then on Fridays, I play Fortnite. So I have Elden Ring, Fortnite, and First Descendant that I rotate out during each week. So, yeah. Excellent. Okay, good. No, I <laughs> it's like very it. It's very diverse. Of the show. You're, you're consistent. Very... <laughs> and, 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 you know, I was wondering what the kind of secret sauce was, so now we know. You know, yeah. it's, having it's a just very diverse, very diverse and, schedule and kind of sticking to mm -hmm. it. If you're working for you, that's excellent. I'm, I'm super glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, and as I alluded to, I've been checking out the game Unicycle Pizza Time, uh, which is I would highly recommend to anyone to check it out. It's a cheap game. It's an indie game. It's a game that was made in like 30 days. Really? Yeah. So they got together. Uh, the, it's a team of two. I believe it's two developers. Like, what mechanic can we do? How can we release it? They had released a previous kind of um, automation game. Uh, and basically, it's like a platformer, kind uh -huh. of puzzle okay. platformer-ish in 3D, but you're on a unicycle. And you can play it co-op with, like, other folks. So you got to, like, jump on the dumpster and then jump oh. on the other thing. And, you know, it's very rage streamer rage <laughs> game. Like, you fall down and fall in a puddle and you, you oh, start over. no. Those obstacles look horrible to traverse. Yes, it's very Holy challenging God. on a unicycle. Uh, like I said, <laughs> the gameplay is super enjoyable, but it's super rage-inducing. So uh, there, there's the disclaimer for, for the game. So you can, is it a two-player co-op or is it up to, up to four, four people? people. Oh, four people? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. And then you're all trying to traverse the obstacles <laughs> and you fall in the water and then you, or you fall is down on your dang player unicycle. collision or do, they, do you phase through the players? It, third person. Like no 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 I mean like um so in some games um if you're playing with a co-op person you bump into them and you yeah. bounce off yeah yeah I, I or is this type you... game, can you phase through them like if you're no, I believe... if your friend is in front of you and you're behind them if can I you recall go past correctly them? I believe they have physics like you can bump okay. into your buddy and bump him off oh, and okay. then he dies right. and everybody's gonna start over got it you know yeah. so but it is it is cheap it is in a, like i said indie development team team of two people they did a whole like little devlog series about how they made the game in 30 days and how they came up with it and the marketing they did they released it with 500 wish lists on steam um that's impressive and it's done it's done pretty well it's done pretty mm -hmm. well so uh cool game check it out and then other than that i've been playing some hogwarts legacy diving back into that because it's october nice. and for any of my fellow mm -hmm. nerds out there you will know that harry potter's parents died in october that's Ooh. when they were killed by Voldemort. 
So okay. uh, it's just an easy play for me, jumping back into some Hogwarts legacy kind of off stream, off content, you know, late at night, kind of just exploring the grounds of, of Hogwarts as it was. Uh, and I really enjoyed the game when it first came out. Uh, and then other than that, I've been playing like a plethora of mobile games. Because as I mentioned, mm. I'm working on my own game. And if there's one thing mobile games do excellent, it's giving feedback to players. Like game oh. as it was. You know, you tap the button and it wiggles or moves or whatever. Um, so I've definitely been doing a deep dive into like a wide range of mobile games, just looking at how they give players feedback. Whether it's like, you know, shooter games or whatever. You know, what happens when I shoot the enemy? Is there a particle mm-hmm. effect? Is there a quick time pause uh, as I work on... Uh, Continuing my own own game, which is called Out of Mana, which uh, should be uh, I should have the Steam page up in about a month or less, Ooh. hopefully. So that's the plan. So yeah, the I think it was a demo, but it was like a zombie survival game that you had us, us in the community yeah, yeah. That try was out. Made with my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was really fun having you actually in chat with me while I was playing it. Yeah, because then it was it was like oh, I never thought of that, or it's just like or it's fun seeing how you built it, and then you know it was like how our two brains were not quite in line but yeah. it was we were able to get to this end goal which was yeah, pretty cool for sure yeah for sure. so great but as for the hogwarts legacy thing yeah, uh, yeah i'm not sure if you might have some help but i've unfortunately not been able to play it because i cannot sync uh i'm on steam with this um, one but i cannot sync my cloud save at all so i'm stuck to where i can't even i tried switching into local and uh, I, it doesn't save, period. It gives me an error message. So all the progress, like I played five hours, just, just create a new character. Mm. That's all gone mm. because it didn't save, period, at all. And I've tried to uninstall of the, you know, yeah, yeah. the whole shebang. Interesting. Yeah, so I started a brand yeah. new playthrough. I'm playing in the cloud. So I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm playing on Boosteroid. Uh, okay. you know, big shout out to Boosteroid for... Uh, for uh you know partnering with me and, and helping me uh get some more games in the cloud i'm super uh, thankful for that um nice. you know so i i don't know about the local play you you honestly might your best bet might be start a brand new playthrough i know that's not what you want to hear but no i did i did start oh, and a new break still not seen. and and yeah Wow. Like I went to the save option and there was blank segments when I click on it is that you cannot do that right now. Interesting. Yeah, like I it's... know there's parts of the game depending where it locks out saving the game. Uh they like... even have the autosave icon, the little wisp fire. Weird. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't run into that one. That is very okay. Odd. Yeah. Hmm. I, I tried looking, but there was nothing. But yeah, I want to play Hogwarts Legacy, but I am currently locked out, unfortunately, with okay. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, <laughs> before we kind of wrap things up here real quick, are there any titles coming out that you're looking forward to? The only one that I'm looking forward to is the Dragon Age uh, Veilguard. Okay. Everything else, it's like, okay, well, that's cool. But um, huge Bioware fan. And so anything Mass Effect or uh, Dragon Age related, I'm like, okay, I'm interested. Tell me more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, don't forget to like, like, and share the podcast. Do all the podcasty things on all the podcasting platforms. It definitely helps the show. Uh, you can find me on all the social places at It's Just Joe. So look for me there. Uh, currently reworking my stream schedule, but I'll get that figured out. More to follow on that. And uh, N7, why don't you tell the folks where they can find you? Uh, just search in seven underscore specters. I should be on pretty much any platform you search for. So just that in seven underscore specters should be able to find me there. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me N seven. I greatly appreciate it. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Bye.